Hello, good afternoon, or good morning, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, my name is Edward James. I'm the Director of Content and Analysis for Meet Projects. And today I'll be giving a short and brief overview of the Caspian Sea projects market, namely Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, and Turkmenistan projects markets. Now, the reason we're doing uh, this presentation, this webinar, is because we've recently launched these three markets on Meet Projects. And we want to give you a brief preview and insight into the size of the markets, what's happening in each of them, and give you a bit of an understanding about some of the opportunities that are available in them. This is a, uh, a fairly brief presentation, but uh, it, along with a few additional slides, will be made uh, available to you. If you do wish to grab a copy of this presentation, this webinar, uh, then please contact us and we will make sure uh, to send it to you. Okay, so let's begin. And the first slide here uh, gives you a very brief overview uh, of the geopolitical, macroeconomic, and oil and gas uh, criteria and key, key figures in these three countries. Uh, we'll start off with Kazakhstan. It's uh, 2.7 million square kilometers in size. Uh, in fact, it is the, one of the world's largest countries and the world's largest landlocked country. It's uh, a uh, former member of the Soviet Union and is currently a member of the CIS states. Its capital is Astana. It used to be Almaty, but in the late 90s it was moved to Astana, which, is, which has a more central location in the country itself. The main language is Kazakh, and uh, Kazakhstan is the largest in terms of the population of these three countries we cover. Uh, it has a population of about 18 million people. And as with Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan, the majority religion, about 70% of the population, are Muslim. It has the largest economy of these three countries. It has a GDP, nominal GDP of $225 billion and a GDP per capita of $13,000, which puts it in the medium ranking size for economies around the world. Now, obviously, uh, one of the reasons we've launched into Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan, and Kazakhstan, these Caspian Sea countries, is because of the large size of their oil and gas uh, reserves and their, and their oil and gas production. And some of these uh, main oil and gas fields you may have heard of, there's the Tengiz field, the Karachaganak field, and the Kashagan fields. These are the three of the most famous and well-known fields in Kazakhstan. Now, Kazakhstan has proved oil reserves of 30 billion barrels, that ranks it 12th in the world, and it has oil production of 2015, which is the last year we have data available, of about 1.67 million barrels a day on average, which ranks it 15. So, in terms of its ranking for reserves against its oil production, it's slightly underperforming. There's a big potential, therefore, for it to uh, increase output. Its proved gas reserves are just under a trillion cubic meters, uh, which ranks it 25th in the world. And in 2015, it produced approximately 12.4 billion cubic meters uh, in the year, according to BP. And we've got quite a, a large variation here, which is why I put in this other source in the CIA World Factbook. Uh, it says it produced 20.8 billion cubic meters. And in fact, today I was just reading a local newspaper in Kazakhstan, which says that this in 2017, they hope to be producing 43 billion cubic meters. So there is quite a, a wide, wide variation in the gas production that is um, uh, that is thought to be taking place in Kazakhstan in recent years. Right, next up we have Azerbaijan. It's a much smaller country. It's only 86,000 uh, square kilometers. Its capital is Baku and the main language is Azerbaijani. It has a, a population of about 10 million people. Uh, Islam is the main religion. Uh, there's a nominal GDP of $39 billion and the GDP per capita is actually quite small, just $4,000 per capita. Its main oil and gas fields, well, the big famous one is the Shah Deniz field offshore of the Caspian, then is Absheron and Umid. It has proved oil reserves of 7 billion barrels. It produces 840,000 barrels a day, which is, ranks it 23rd in the world. That's a similar level to Oman in the GCC, if you're going to make comparisons, and a little under what Qatar produces. It has 2.4 trillion cubic meters of proved gas reserves, which ranks it 15th in the world and its gas production uh, is 18.2 billion cubic meters in 2015. According to BP, that ranks it 33rd in the world. So again, a big variation between its proven gas reserves and what it actually produces. So there's a big potential there for Azerbaijan to increase gas output. 
And lastly, we come to Turkmenistan. It has, it's, a, it's a fairly large country, 491,000 square kilometers in size. Its, cas its capital is Ashgabat. The language is Turkmen, and it has a population, a very small population, given the size of the country of just 5.1 million people. Islam, like the other two countries, is the main religion, and it has a nominal GDP of $42.3 billion, and a GDP per capita of $7,600. Its main oil and gas fields are the Galkanish field, which, when it was announced about 10 years ago, uh, was declared as the world's second largest gas field after the South Pars North gas field shared between Qatar and Iran. There's also the Dalaltabad field. In terms of oil, uh, Turkmenistan is not such a major player. It only has reserves of 600 million barrels. It's 44th in the world, and it produced 261,000 barrels a day which ranks at 36, so it, it's, it's producing at a higher rate than its ranking would suggest. And in terms of proved gas reserves, uh, it has 17.5 trillion cubic meters, which makes it the world's six largest gas reserves. So that makes it a pretty major player. And uh, gas production of 72.4 billion cubic meters in 2015, which ranks at 11th for the world. So it has a substantial ability to ramp up. So clearly we're talking about three major hydrocarbon economies, some which are geared to oil, some which are geared to gas, but all three share um, the same similar challenges. Their main issues are that even though they have very substantial oil and gas reserves, their main issues are the fact is that, is that their geography means that exporting these oil, this oil and gas is very problematic. To get their oil and gas uh, exported, they have to build very long distance pipelines across many different other countries. And this uh, creates geopolitical issues. There are issues around transit. Uh, there are issues around payments to other countries. And there are uh, challenges around a finding your export market as a result. So for example, Turkmenistan, despite having huge amount of gas reserves and production, exports has to export only to one real market, which is China. Despite it wanting to export to India, it has to go first go through Afghanistan and Pakistan. And these create all sorts of challenges in terms of transit. Add in geopolitical challenges with the countries in the area, and there you can see you can see how getting these products to market these from these landlocked countries is the main challenge. So let's move on to the next slide, which is just taking a look at the total value of projects in each country. Here's a very, quite a straightforward graph. We have uh, three columns uh, looking at the value of projects in each country. And we can see that overall, there are more than $165 billion of uh, known projects uh, in the three Caspian Sea states. The largest, uh, which is in line with the size of its economy and its population, is Kazakhstan with more than $70 billion worth of projects. We then have Azerbaijan at more than $50 billion. And then we have Turkmenistan at more than $40 billion. So they, in total, were $165 billion uh, of active market, of active projects. That's in line with, well, a little bit more than the value of contracts uh, which would be awarded in the GCC uh, in any given year. Last year, for example, we saw $120 billion worth of projects awarded in the GCC. On a country-by-country -country level, uh, $165 billion would make them the same size as the Kuwaiti, Oman, or Qatar projects market. So they're a quite decent uh, project market size. And as their oil and gas production ramps up and they seek to modernize uh, their infrastructure, then we would expect these project markets to continue growing in size. Okay, now let's take a look at that same data, but taking a look at it by sector rather than country level. We're combining the countries and we're looking at the individual sectors. Uh, now, we can see quite clearly from this graph that perhaps unsurprisingly, uh, the oil and gas sectors are the two single largest uh, sectors in these three uh, countries. We have gas at close to forty billion, uh, close to forty billion dollars. Oil at more than thirty billion dollars, and we can see uh, the breakdown there between uh, ongoing and upcoming projects. So we can see that uh, there were more than twenty billion dollars of gas projects ongoing, and a little, and a, almost the same amount uh, coming up. Construction and transport, the next two largest sectors, uh, 
clearly uh, the oil and gas revenues that these countries have enjoyed over the last few years have been used to Im, uh, modernise and improve infrastructure, whether that's in uh, railways, or airports, uh, ports um, and general housing infrastructure. A lot of the uh, investment has been in new city developments such as Astana for example and with ministerial buildings and ic other iconic projects which are a common uh, theme. Uh, for the, uh, the Caspian region, but also the MENA region as a whole. Now, along with strong economic growth and demographic growth, of course, comes the need for investment in power. All these countries were former parts of the Soviet Union and, as a result, did suffer from underinvestment in their key infrastructures, uh, infrastructure sectors for many decades. And it's only since the opening up of their economies from the 90s that they've been able to invest substantially in modernising this infrastructure. So power is just one example along with transport of, of such investment. Like everywhere in the, Asia re in the Asian world, there's been a lot of investment or there's an, an increasing amount of investment in uh, renewable and alternative energies. Wind power especially is considered a very key uh, future sector. We've also got large investments in solar energy and nuclear un uh, is going to be a, a major key player. Now, of course, uh, these countries uh, have legacy nuclear plants as a result of the Soviet Union investment uh, between uh, in, the, in previous decades. Uh, and they certainly want to build on that and build new nuclear plants as well. So, uh, like Many countries in, the, in, the, in Asia, in the West Asia, MENA region, and power is a major critical sector of investment. And not, perhaps and unsurprisingly as well, adding on to that, when you have high oil and gas air production, particularly in the gas sector, you want to benefit from your gas output, especially if you are finding struggling to export your gas, to use that gas down the value added chain to be able to manuf um, invest in petrochemical plants and go down that value chain and produce polymers, olefins and various plastics uh, to create additional jobs uh, in, your, in your countries and to um, get the maximum value extraction that you can from your oil and gas output. So no surprise uh, that petrochemicals is also a major sector, more uh, close to $20 billion in terms of, of active projects. Industry two, uh, associated, industries, associated industries, especially when you've got uh, cheap power production, you can benefit by making uh, uh, various heavy, heavy materials and metals such as steel, aluminium, cement production, all supporting the economy as a whole. Okay, so now well, let's take a look uh, briefly at some of the key uh, major players in, uh, each, uh, in each of these markets. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, the top clients in, uh, in the three countries. Uh, and you can see here a ranking of the top 10 uh, key clients. And as, as you, as, again, very similar to the MENA region, you can see here that the majority of these top clients are government-owned entities. We are still talking about uh, very public-dominated projects markets with the lump sum turnkey EPC approach tends to be the contract uh, of choice with projects directly funded from the government budget. And one of the reasons, uh, again, this goes back to one of the reasons why we selected Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan and Kazakhstan as the next three countries for the Meat Projects expansion is because of the uh, similarities culturally, geographically, geopolitically and economically that they have with the MENA region. And it's one of the reasons why, based on our market research, so many of our ME project subscribers said that actually these Caspian countries were the ones that they were looking for uh, at the most, especially given the downturn that we're currently experiencing in the GTC. And so these three Caspian countries do offer uh, a very good outlet or op um, alternative market uh, for the uh, people, uh, companies who have been look at the MENA region which are finding their opportunities far reduced. So going to this ten, uh, ranking of 10 uh, key clients, uh, the largest is uh, Sokar which is the main oil and gas uh, company, the national oil company of Azerbaijan. Uh, it's by far the largest player both in terms of uh, downstream and upstream investment in oil and gas. Uh, we then have Turkmen Gas which is the Turkmeni NOC. We have the Karachaganak Consortium, which is a group of NOCs and IOCs developing the Karachaganak uh, field. Uh, and then we have Kazaftozol, again, another key 
a Kazakhstani oil and gas company. The Tapi Pipeline Company, which is looking at um, getting the uh, oil and gas out of uh, the Caspian region uh, through uh, to export markets. Uh, Baku White City, a major real estate development uh, in Baku. The Azerbaijani Ministry of Economy. Azer Energy, the main power utility provider in Azerbaijan. The Ministry of Transport in Azerbaijan, which has been developing airports and roads. And then we fi finally we have the Kazakhstan Temir Zoli. So, for, by, the, by and large, again, clients tend to be dominant, top clients tend to be dominated by government entities. And now we come to the final slide, which is looking at the top contractors uh, in the Caspian Sea uh, region. We can see that there's a mixture from this list, that there's a mixture of international and local players. So it is a market where the big oil and gas projects, the big infrastructure projects do need international assistance uh, to, to help on. Uh, the Chinese and the Korean firms tend to be quite strong uh, in these countries. As you can see, CNPC, China National Petroleum Corporation, is the leading uh, contractor by work under execution with more than three billion dollars of work in hand. Uh, we also have the uh, consort Korean consortium, Hyundai Engineering, Hyundai NC, and LG International at 2.5 billion. Another Korean consortium, this time with a Japanese player, Hyundai Engineering, LG International, and Itochu. Uh, we have Ilk Construction. Now, given the proximity to Turkey, uh, it's no surprise to know that uh, Turkish companies uh, play a very significant roles, particularly in Azerbaijan, but given the strong historical and cultural and linguistic links uh, between Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan and Kazakhstan, then it's no surprise to see that Turkish companies particularly play a very strong role uh, in them. Uh, we have uh, China Petroleum Engineering and Construction, CPCC, uh, Kawasaki of Industries of, J of Japan with Renaissance uh, of Turkey, Promstroy Enigo, a local firm, Gap and Shat from Turkey, uh, Saipem, Bosch Shelf, Star Gulf, Saipem of course being a, uh, along with any one of, one of the big Italian players in, uh, in Kazakhstan in particular, and then Turkey's Kalik Energy. Uh, but there is a lot of opportunities for co companies around the world to exploit some of the m major opportunities uh, across the sectors in these three markets. Now, we do have many other slides, uh, which unfortunately we don't have time uh, to show you today, but we do have lists of uh, uh, the top uh, contractors, uh, uh, sorry, the list of the top projects, both ongoing and future. We've got breakdowns of, uh, uh, of the various different sectors uh, and uh, a wealth of other uh, great graphs and information. If you do want uh, to access a bit more data and a bit more uh, uh, information on the Caspian uh, Sea region and please contact us and we'll be happy to send you uh, a, a slightly enlarged presentation of what I've presented today in the, the webinar. Of course as well please speak to your account managers uh, or your, uh, your customer success managers at me projects um, that you deal with and ask them how you can access uh, the more than 500 profiles we have on the Caspian Sea region uh, currently and the more than 165 billion dollars worth of project opportunities we have in those markets. We think it's a very exciting opportunity, we think it's a very exciting time for these markets and given the downturn in the GCC right now we think it offers a very good alternative. So if you are interested please get in touch with us and we'd be happy to give you a demo and show you a bit more about what we have.